Good evening with the midweek edition of Sports Night. I'm Anne-Marie Burke. We begin with news of cricket where the Mumbai Indians have moved to 12 points after today's nail-biting three-run win over Chris Gale's Kings Eleven Punjab in the IPL. It was a welcome return to form and to the team for Kyron Pollard who blasted 50 from 23 balls to help Mumbai to 186 for 8. Kiara Yule then led the fight back for the Kings 11 with an innings of 94, but it was all in vain as they fell three runs short on 183 for 5. The Henderson Williams City Futsal Festival is set to start tomorrow and runs until next Monday at the Pondside Hardcourt in Nelson Street. The five-a-side tournament is expected to host 10 teams divided into two zones, with each game set to run for 30 minutes with a grand prize of $1,000. Executive producer Henderson Williams says the tournament will become an annual event and is another step to enhance the city's development. In all of our endeavors, we... We continue to engage young people and build social cohesion and social harmony. Uh, and we would have found that um, if we were to do um, a social science kind of assessment or, or a survey, when these games are being played in the city, we recognize that there is normally a calming down of tempers right. with the young people right. because they're engaged with something that is productive and the energies that are, 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 are the, you know, they, they call the excess energy, they burn it off. Uh, and they spend more of their time focusing on winning and, 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 and good camaraderie. Tournament advisor Hamilton Lashley says females are also welcome to compete as part of an initiative to develop women's football on the island. We're not forgetting the ladies because you know that the Barbados Football Association is developing women's football. And Barbados women's football is progressing rapidly. We've just had some very good results coming out of the, some of the friendlies that were played. And this is another good forum where you can encourage the younger, particularly in the city, uh, to come and, and start playing their football. Harrison College collected their biggest victory for the season yesterday when they defeated Christchurch Foundation in the latest fixture of the Cooperators General Insurance School's Under-16 Basketball Tournament. Playing at Churchill, College ran riot in the four quarters to wipe out Foundation by a massive 95 points. CBC's Akeem Clinkett reports. Foundation in the black got the show on the road, driving from backcourt, beating the defender and going straight to the hole. Harrison College replying instantly, still in the midcourt and the pass releasing Nathan Waters who bites it in for 12 17 points. 8 C on the attack in front again, pass to Justin Bailey, posts up and gets it to go down, 14 points on the evening. 8 C back again on the defensive end, interception and the pass finds Kyron Alexander who runs the floor for the easy layup, he also had 14. 8C with the quick ball movement, give and go from Alexander, who then finds Bailey and he applies the finishing touches. Then Waters gets a case of hot hands and buries the tray, as 8C went into the half by a massive margin, 34-3. In the second, 8C continuing the tight defense, which led to offense. Simeon Maynard is the recipient and he banks it in with his left hand. Game high 20 points for him. Maynard then doing it all on his own, Intercepting the pass, then pressing gas, full steam to the bucket, and finishing with another layup. Foundation, who were bystanders thus far, reduced the deficit, not by much, but each basket counts. Timothy Braffitt with the banking jumper. But HC would reply with a jumper of their own. Chikosi Bordi with the smooth release, two of his 12. Late in the encounter, Foundation added another two points. Christopher Barker missing the shot collecting his own offensive board and producing the putback. But it was all done and dusted from the early proceedings. 8C completely annihilating foundation, winning this one, 112 to 17. Akeem Clinkett, CBC Sports. Meanwhile, Dighton Griffith enjoyed a 19-point home victory over Graydon Seeley. CBC's Kamal Haynes reports. Dighton Griffith in the black and white. Keon the Silver gets things going with a layup off the backboard. The homeboys were in a groove. Jared Allen sinks the long two. Dighton maintaining strong offense. The Silver showing skill through the D and finishing with the layup. 
with no real defensive challenge, there was no stopping the Silver, who ended with a game-high 13 points. Graydon City managed a few points in this half. Cody Griffith converts as his team trails 5-11 into the halftime break. Second half action, and Graydon City off to a good start. Griffith, the man wants more, converts with a layup. The Silver responded immediately for Dayton, cementing the slam dunk to put the crowd on their feet. A definite player of the week nominee. Graydon City, despite a huge deficit, kept the fight on with the steal and finding Rod Stumbass who converts two of his eight points. Dighton would go on to win by a 19-point margin, taking the game with a 31-13 victory over Graydon Sealy. Kamal Haynes, CBC Sports. There are wins for challengers, Celtics, Patriots and police when the BA Bay Division 1 continued recently. Patriots just edged out Panthers in their encounter 69-63. Police beat ACS 52-43 while challengers were 62-36 winners and Celtics had an easy 69-46 win over Bears. Here's a look at the latter two games. Bears proved to be no challenge for the challengers as this game was totally dominated by the men in black that was just inside for two big ones. Challengers with possession again and taking it to the basket is Julian Grant. Bears had some rare shiny moments stealing this one off the ring and it goes down court and if the final say was Devon Subam. But challengers were on fire, three big ones from Ramon Ward. Bears trying to keep pace and off the board was Antonio Sealy. But by the end of the first half, challengers were away ahead 30 to 22. And they continue to widen the gap. That's two more. It was starting to almost look too easy. Patrick Neal getting the basket. Ward then starts to stunting a nice fadeaway. And it was signed, sealed, and delivered. Challengers taking the 62 to 36 win over the Bears. Meanwhile, in the night's second game, Celtics in the green totally dominated the College Lions, taking that encounter 69-46. to 46.